I'd like to offer the homily for the 11th week in ordinary time. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to the crowds, This is how it is with the kingdom of God. It is as if a man were to scatter seed on the land, and would sleep and rise night and day, and through it all the seed would sprout and grow, he knows not how. Of its own accord the land yields fruit, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. When the grain is ripe, he wheels a sickle at once, for the harvest has come. He said, To what shall we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable can we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, that when it is sown in the ground, is the smallest of all seeds on the earth. But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants, and puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them, as they were able to understand it. Without parables, he did not speak to them, but to his own disciples, he explained everything in private. The Gospel of the Lord. It's a beautiful passage. I like to focus on the mustard seed. I'm not sure if any of you have ever seen a mustard seed. It's extremely small. It's really tiny. In fact, you could barely even notice it in someone's hand. And yet it becomes this beautiful bush. And I think my point is that we need to be patient we need to put in the work. We need to allow God to cultivate our soul over a long period of time so we can become holy and beautiful and powerful. Now, I remember as a kid, we would always get these chocolate Easter eggs. And I was disappointed when I would bite into an Easter egg and see that it was hollow. You know, I was hoping for caramel to come oozing out or some nuts or some, you know, something interesting in there that would... It would make it more exciting, but a hollow Easter egg? What a waste. Why did I even get this Easter egg? I wish I hadn't wasted my time on it. And that's what I think could happen to a lot of Americans. We focus so much on our appearance, how we look, you know, our face, our body, our abs. You know, we're staying in shape. We're staying fit. There's so much time and effort spent on the externals, on our health. But so little is spent on our soul, the beauty of our soul, the hard work that needs to go into a soul. And that's really what people most need is that, that inner beauty that's developed over a lot of time. You know, mustard seed is buried in the ground before you even see anything pop up. It's hidden. And then it pops up. Then you start to understand it becomes more beautiful. And I think too many people are afraid of being buried in the ground, not being seen, not being heard. Those hidden acts of charity no one notices. That time spent on your knees in the chapel when no one's around, just you and Jesus. Making an effort to go to confession, to go to Mass. You know, to really work on yourself. Are you prideful? Are you lazy? Are you vain? Are you lustful? Do you lack self-mastery? What's in you that's getting in the way of God? What's covering God's beauty? What junk is, is over this image of God called our soul that we need to generally purify and take care of? You know, I always tell women that for me, I would say this even now, that after all these years in this world that I've been in, the absolute highlight of my life has been time spent with my mom. Just being in front of my mom. You know, when she was 60 and 70 and 80 and 90. She died when she was 91. And it seemed like as she turned 60 and 70 and 80 and 90, she became more and more beautiful, more and more radiant. I discovered more and more richness within her. It wasn't a hollow Cadbury car, a Cadbury bar. It was a beautiful diamond with a lot of facets that I couldn't get enough of. It was a rose that just fascinated me with this beauty that I couldn't stop looking at. And I think that's the mustard seed. It's, it's this development within us that grows into something beautiful that everyone else can benefit from. And it doesn't just happen. There's not a quick fix. You know, I just did a baptism today, and I was talking to two of the, the brothers of the lady whose child was baptized, and we were talking about how to sell the faith, you know, and, and, and I told them, look, you got to love the thorns, you got to love the cross. I said, Father, that's not going to fly with our generation. We don't want to hear that. So I agree, but do you want peace? Do you want joy? Does that fly? Do you want to have enthusiasm? The word enthusiasm comes from the Greek word entheos. Do you want to be enthusiastic? Do you want to have a fire in your belly? Do you want to inspire people? Sure, I want that. Okay, well, if you want that, 
then you have to go to where Jesus is, which is in the Eucharist. You need to spend time in prayer. You need to listen to the Holy Spirit to tell you what needs to be worked on. And not just focus on your body and your face and your health and your career. But you need to embellish and make more beautiful your soul. That's the mustard seed. That's what we need. Internal beauty. You know, there's an expression that beauty attracts, holiness inspires. I live in D.C. I lived in New York. There's a lot of beautiful faces walking around town. A lot of handsome guys and beautiful women, okay? We don't need more beautiful faces. We need more holy hearts. We need more saints. We need more people that are really taking their, their character seriously, that are, aren't afraid to be challenged by God and by their spouse and by their loved ones to grow. You know, I go to spiritual direction myself. Every month I talk to a priest. I don't tell them, Father, everything's great, no problems, everything's amazing, no issues, A+, plus, all good, I'm fine. No, I don't say that, I'm not fine. I'm a good priest. But I need to work on things like all of you. I'm not that beautiful, you know, uh, rose <laughs> at times. I want to be a rose, but sometimes I don't like the thorns. And that's the price we have to pay for that beauty. So I guess the takeaway is just be patient with your spiritual growth. Stick with it. And remember, that's the most important thing. Focus on the soul. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.